continue making mistakes and RJF might take their place entirely. We'll have to see uh, yeah. how it goes. But And that's the kicker, right? This is the win or go home. You win, you go to Vancouver. You lose, you're out of the tournament. Yep. So drop one, Canyon Network. Here we go. Two European teams going head-to-head to see who gets to go to Vancouver. Let's do it. I can only hope that this goes to three drops. Maybe a little, uh, you know, a little caster bias there, trying to get the best that we can get. <laughs> oh, we love that. We love two-one decisions. I love. Can close you imagine a, a drop three? These two teams deciding who gets to go on to the Vancouver finals. I want it so bad. Make it happen. Somebody make well, it happen. We'll have to see how drop one goes first. Exactly. And we've seen that before where somebody's had like a decisive win in drop one and then a decisive loss in drop two. It can happen. It has happened. And when you're playing at this level, you know, the slightest mistake can cause such a huge just Man, shift in, in, uh, in results. So Lizzie in that supernova heading over to Junkyard. Looks like he's going to do some ER large laser overwatch. Funky Cat in that executioner. This is a very, very familiar sight coming out of Eon Synergy here. Uh, what is RJF doing to respond? And to that? RJF sent two hunchbacks uh, down towards Kappa again, but this time it looks like they're trading early on. Uh, both hunchbacks look to be the standard ER large medium laser builds rather than uh, taking a brawl mech, but they're spreading out down that Kappa line. We've seen a couple teams do that. So the Executioner seems to specialize in robbing this area from these mechs here. They've got the Summoner, but then they've also got the Supernova swinging way wide that, that supernova, supernova might be able to hold back. him down he's way back but he might he might be able to hold off that corner if that executioner decides he wants to trade in on den airwalker uh that supernova alone might be able to lock that area down and there we go we got those shots coming in on that executioner who won in that trade uh looks like terra's down to 96 percent funky cat down to 82 but a great strike kind of evened it up right there terrace definitely has to watch that but really that supernova is keeping den airwalkers flank uh safe oh a nice strike right across that su uh, summoner we kind of got hit. two separate fights here a 4v4 on the kappa sigma line a 4v4 on the gamma epsilon line Pelmashek and Burya pressing way up. They got Kappa under control. Looks like they're actually starting to pull back now, and uh, they might try to just control the cap from distance while continuing to trade. But they, they got a little bit of pressure and a UAV up uh, on that north side. Can they get out without taking too much damage? A lot of strikes coming down on this Epsilon corner. I, I don't know if I really like trading from that Epsilon hill too much where Eon Synergy is sitting right now, but if they can if they can hold it, that's not a bad spot to be in. RJF is up on the caps right now because they haven't taken Epsilon. Yeah, they haven't had the opportunity to. Uh, really, that Supernova and Nick Dresery can kind of lock that point down if they attempted to cap it. Another strike coming out. Let's fi follow the plane in. Nice hit be right careful across here, And Nomer pushing up on these Wolfhounds. From danger close, getting a big shot in on the red goes the Fasta. There is some really aggressive play. Ooh, nice strike there as well. So they've got the Summoner and the Hunchback 2C actually pulled out, and now they've got essentially a 4v2, but the, the Hunchback and the Summoner are starting to respond. Buria getting another good burn on Dared. They, they cost Kalmashek him a lot is of very damage. hurt, But here comes the Summoner and the Hunchback for Eon as well, coming up over the hill. Uh, there is a UAV up, so they should see these guys coming. Ooh, big burn on Igor there. They this. They're starting to add this up on Igor. Those wolfhounds are in pretty dire straits, but the, the summoner and the hunchback is right out. there. They're still getting burns in. This is going to get bloody really fast. Nomer is uh, kind of overstepping it a bit, and he got burned pretty hard. Here comes another strike. Just missed Nomer. And while that's Nomer. going on, the Here summoners the are moving up for RJF as well. Pelmashek and Buria trying to get some shots in there, but Terminator gets Igor taken down. Igor gets the kill. Nomer is not long either. He's he's in dire straits, and they're getting right up on him. He goes down. They can't just throw the Arctic Cheetahs away like this. They lost the fight, but they, those Wolfhounds might get in on them. Do they stay and try yeah, and do run. something, or do they run? If they run, they're going to get chased down, though. It's going to be savage. In the meantime, their Epsilon mechs are actually winning this engagement, I think, right here. 
against the rest of the max. Lizzie in the supernova is down to 38%. They're light. Burya, Burya is getting is right into in it. The canyon. And he gets that taken out and Kelmashek. Both Burya. cheetahs are down. Four mechs dead now for RJ, uh, RJF. These remaining mechs have a tall order, but they've dealt quite a bit of damage. They just can't afford bad trades at this point. And those other mechs are going to come join the fight here. 8v4. And Nick Jazari is out in the open right now. Does get a good strike uh, strike on Legolas there, but they're grouped up again. And they're down on the mid-level here. They, they don't have good angles, and Eon's just going to surround them, I think. They're going to start putting their freshest mechs forward, I think, here. But Terrace in the Supernova, able to land a kill on Funky Cat. The Executioner has gone down. Qbert, though, putting some damage in on RGS, RJF Volkadev. I think, yeah, Zelaglock gets a pop in on his backside. They're starting to get bold. They're starting to push this, and they're going to they're gonna wrap There's this up right here. There's not enough mechs remaining right now for RJF. That light fight really, I mean, any advantage they had on Epsilon Corner just fell apart as soon as they lost four yeah. mechs and didn't take anybody down with them. Eon Synergy doing a fantastic job keeping their mechs healthy, and that is it the on drop one for RJFS. That was actually relatively close considering, but that, that failure of the lights and mediums, uh, it, des it really cost them big time. They dealt we a lot of damage. time and time again in this tournament. Eon Synergy with those light pilots. That's that is literally their strongest suit right now. Is the light fight? You've got to try and think about how you're going to handle that. And and I'm not sure, uh, you know, a direct combat is going to is going to do it for you. At the same time, Basically, I think they had an opportunity. Fight. They could have taken those lights out on that corner, but they had their their uh, hunchbacks in tow playing extremely passively on that corner. Maybe if they got yeah, around and started beginning. putting out the fire on Dered, Dered got burned pretty hard. He lived to the end, but he got burned pretty hard. They could have capitalized on that because the uh, the Hunchback and the Summoner, I believe, uh, that were responding back to help the lights, they were a few steps away. They went back to trade some more, leaving those two Wolfhounds on their own, and there was an opportunity there, I believe, uh, for maybe that group of four to get some damage done, but the longer they sat on those on that corner, uh, those trade mechs came back to help, made it a four v four, and then ultimately Eon Synergy outmaneuvering the the stagnant RJFS uh, mediums essentially, and uh, and put them down. But they could have played that a little bit differently, and at the very least, I think they could have come away with a couple kills. But ultimately, it uh, looks like we're going back to Canyon Network, the map banning already completed. Um, but the, you know, I don't know. It was just down Eight to a to little four. bit of timing, I think, in Eight. that in that combat no matter how on, hurt everybody is camera. eight to four it's so hard to come back from an eight to four even if everybody's wide open i mean we've seen it happen but there was enough uh pretty healthy mechs for eon synergy available that um you know it, it didn't take much for them to just overwhelm the remaining rjf mechs yeah. so well you can take so many angles away from rjf that there's you know, it's with the, with that many mechs on the field. As long as you're not just charging in one at a time, you know, you spread out, you just surround them, and and they, you know, they don't have enough guns to shoot everyone who's shooting back at them. Yeah, and so that's, you know, heat cap is a currency, and so you've got somebody with twice the bankroll of you. You know, it's gonna quickly go against you unless you can start putting mechs down quickly. Um, take a look at the map here. Basically, uh, RJF uh, committing to a heavy Kappa and then a past Kappa kind of presence here with the Wolfhounds essentially just operating in this region, but they sent their other guys back across the bridge to continue trading in. Uh, well, the Executioner up on Epsilon Corner and then some guys further back, you know, just a general trade line. Um, we had the Supernova way back in E5. We had a guy trading up in here. Uh, and then I think we had somebody trading over Theta at some point. Uh, no, I think both Supernovas were... I think the other Supernova was like Echo 4, actually. Okay, so further back somewhere. Yeah, he was back here. So generally, this was region was their out. trade. And yeah. they seem to be doing all right around that Epsilon. They actually pushed them back around the corner, made uh, Eon Synergy kind of retreat 
into a reception line, which isn't a terrible thing, but generally just receiving. Yeah. I liked, I mean, I like the push by their heavier lance, but you've got to get some kills, uh, you so, know, in that four v four Kappa fight. The thing that jumps out at me the most here is that, um, you know, they had this aggressive thing over Kappa, and that's fine. I think they could have had their lights doing that, but they could, they could have been having like. Uh, their hunchbacks up trading as well, you know. They, yeah, they, yeah. And that's something we saw Blackwatch do, where they had their guys close, but they weren't necessarily sitting there. Essentially, these guys all sitting in a group of four underneath Kappa. If you're gonna do that, you've got to commit to to the, using those four mechs to get a kill. You know, get an ambush, whatever, on those two wolfhounds here. But the mm-hmm. two hunchbacks were kind of just defending Kappa. I mean, you can't allo- allocate an entire lance to defend a point well and you've got people dying in the back nothing out of it yeah so if they if they had those hunchbacks over there that's fine but they needed to be like up here trading or somewhere up here putting shots downfield because well they're just basically chillaxing down in the kappa region here they're not outputting anything and the rest of their team is starting to hemorrhage on that and then if you're gonna have all your guys over there they need to win the fight you know, you've got the yeah. Wolfhounds coming in, you've got these guys returning, and then you've got just this hard push around the corner, and you get just spun up on, backed up around the corner, retreating, and then shredded down. If you're going to do that, you got to be guaranteed to win the fight, and you got to be, or you got to be getting those hunchbacks up and trading the entire time, trying to find angles to force the enemy into something. But not a huge fan of just the, the general keep your head down situation there yeah i agree with you i agree with you absolutely and we didn't watch them 100 percent the entire time but it just seemed like those hunchbacks did not contribute much i mean when they were aggressive it was i don't want to say too little but it was definitely too late that's kind of the the moral of that right they they started pushing around that corner beyond kappa but at that point here comes the summoner and the hunchback for eon you know giving support yeah, if they if they went in a little bit quicker, they could have rushed those uh, wolfhounds out. Maybe that would have given them them the opportunity to start maybe pop tarting up and and hitting those approaching, um, uh, you know, the summoner and stuff like that. But basically, by sitting down and waiting, it allowed those guys to respond because they knew that those lights were up there trading. I don't know yeah. if they knew the hunchbacks were there, but they knew that the the lights were at least up front trading and getting some good solid burns in on on De Red. Though they were winning a little bit of that Arctic Cheetah trade into the Wolfhound, it was looking pretty good. But they continued doing just the same old, same old, holding that point down, and then whoop, they got jumped and shredded down. No answer for it. Four zero on that engagement, which then leads to an eight four engagement down the road and it was just no good so rjfs that's something i think they can turn around though that's not a big change i don't think it's a huge change it's not like a a fundamental change that's a tweak and if rjf can tweak i still think that they have an opportunity here against eon synergy they just need to uh they need to execute so just waiting on everybody getting ready up we are going back to yeah, Indian Synergy. Uh, looks like they're swapping out a player right now. Awesome. But once again, fantastic crowd out there watching the action. Um, glad all you guys could join us. Hopefully you're enjoying the show. And once again, we're looking to see which of these two teams will be going to Vancouver for MechCon 2017. Um to basically fight against EMP and 228 Blackwatch in the finals live in December. Uh, And you guys can go see it. Buy your tickets. Get to MechCon. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. Last year was awesome. It was fantastic. The food was great. The people were great. The the stuff you got to do was great. The environment, the... Just the feeling of the place, being surrounded by Mech Warriors, was amazing. It's something I haven't had the opportunity to experience before, and I'm glad that I was there. And let's just recap what we're going to have there, right? You're going to have the top three teams in the game from all around the world. They're going to get together. Two of them we already know, 228 and EMP. Now we have to decide the result of this game, who the third team's going to be. The top three teams competing for the 2017 World Championships, you're going to have the playable demo for MechWarrior 5. You're going to have Harebrained Schemes in their Battletech game. 
You're going to have tabletop games there. You're going to have Solaris tournaments. You're going to have the people, the fans, Alex Iglesias, you know, all, all the guys from Catalyst Game Labs. It is an awesome time. Absolutely. It's going to be a blast. It's in a bigger venue now. Um, I'm sure the the venue they've picked probably has even better acoustics and all that stuff, so I can't wait to see like how the caster bench is set up and everything and and just see just how every, I just love just walking out on stage and just seeing just all these people and, and stuff. It's just such a fantastic experience and just the energy in the place and when big plays go down, there is nothing like when something big happens, hearing a crowd roar. Uh, and I cannot wait to see that happen again. It's going to be so amazing. Yeah. It's going to be fantastic. But, yeah, they have uh, they looks like they're still working on getting their player in there. Once again, we've got giveaways rolling. We've been giving a ton of stuff away. Uh, and so to get into the giveaway, all you got to do is participate in chat. Just start cheering for somebody, and uh, you will be automatically entered into the roulette for the drawings and we'll be doing those at the end of this matchup which they've got their pilot in here and everybody's getting ready up we should be launching shortly it's gonna be good all right come on we can do it rjf needs a win here yeah, if RGF loses this, they are going home. If Eon loses this, they've still got one more chance taking it into game three. But uh, RGF has been playing really well. And like I said, they just made some mistakes. But that that's something that can be turned around just through a conversation, just through uh, just a, a change in expectations of a drop caller. I mean, there's... You know, they can fix that on the fly coming into drop two. And we've seen it happen before in spectacular fashion. Uh, and that's kind of what separates the good teams from the great, right? The ability to, to come back and say, you know what? That didn't work. We're going to try something else. And with no practice, no drop time, just get out there and win it. Absolutely. Uh, and sometimes you see it go absolutely horribly, and then uh, it all falls apart. But that's the risk you take when you come to play on this level. Been there, done that. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, man, we're just about ready. The last guy getting readied up right now, and we will be cruising in. Once again, if you guys are interested in competitive play, get out to the competitive forum on mwomercs.com. Post up in the hiring hall or check out some of the teams that are currently recruiting for competitive play. We've got a lot of exciting third-party leagues and competitions out there. Really adds an extra level to the excitement of MechWarrior Online. Uh, get in there, get trained up, get excited, and then get into uh, the World Championships. Hopefully they do it again next year. I really do. I hope there's a World Championships 2018. I hope we're back again next year. And I cannot wait to see how many new teams we've got up and coming uh, to duke it out. And, uh, and I've really enjoyed the, the updated format for the semifinals. Instead of having the uh, three regions and top five from each region, just get the top 12 and put them together. It makes scheduling a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, makes for some long days. But at the same time, you are seeing the top 12, period, playing yep. each other. It makes for some great matches. No doubt about it. And that makes Metcon that much more exciting because you know you've got the top three teams together in the same building at the same time on LAN. You know, there's no like, oh, well, they're only here because they are in this region. None of that going on at all. This is the top three teams in the world. And RJF here has to win this if they want to be one of those teams. But Eon up 1-0 on the series. Let's get in and see what happens. They've switched sides. So... We're seeing Terrace Kedick now in an executioner uh, of his oh. own. Large Pulse, Heavy Large Laser, th five ER Meads. That's the same. Uh, they got two of them. They've got two of those mechs. And a linebacker. Holy cow. I think we're going to have ourselves a bit of a push deck here. That's what we were saying with uh, RJF. You know, try something different. Well, this is the different right here. Are we going to see an Epsilon push? See, the thing is, though, they've got to get some fire in early. Otherwise, you know, Ian's going to know something's up. If they get discovered, though, it's going to be savage. I mean, if those linebackers kind of give up their presence, 
really early on here. That and could Eon's explode very wide spread open. out. So Del They've Red moving up to Theta. They're getting the cap on Theta. Lizzie in a mauler at Bucket Hill has a wide view on Epsilon. He's going to be able to see as this executioner comes around the corner. Here we go. And they might be able to catch Lizzie They're out if they go aggressive. Push. The executioners are going way wide. I'm not sure I like that move. I don't know. They're trying to get in on but that supernova. The but they can't just leave him alone. But the hunchbacks need to get up into the fight here. They can't sit back. And a bit of a traffic jam there. Den Airwalker and, and Nick in those linebackers kind of colliding a little bit. But those linebackers moving up very fast as those executioners close on. That all Muller MX-90 sitting in the backside. It wasn't even a supernova. But RJF Volkadev going toe-to-toe -to -toe against Lizzie, who's in that ballistic mech. And he is doing quite a bit of work on that executioner. They are working on that Liz on Lizzie though, and they take him out. Lizzie goes down, Main but they body need to keep moving through. quick because the rest of the mechs are running uh, basically away from this engagement for Eon. The, which is some the of them smart are getting him in do. their backfield though. The Cheetahs now getting in on the backfield of Qbert and Legolas. They're starting to do some work, but uh, the Executioner is now starting to cross that gap, getting some burns in on Funky Cat in his own Executioner. There, Qbert now is getting isolated in the pit. With two Arctic Cheetahs on his tail, uh, tail Funny here. Funky Cat goes down. A good strike, and then the linebackers take him down with a nice shot. Pelmashek is working on Qbert, but he's not quite able to. There it is. A team kill. Da Red kills Qbert with that strike, but Terminator goes down to Igor. Now it looks like RJF Zegalock getting up on, as well on trying to get linebacker. Legolas. They have Zelaglock in the backfield, though. they got to get though. some fire on Zelaglock here. He's I don't just know if they the know he's there yet. Away. Yeah, he's, they They've know he's there he's now. There. He's They're getting on there now. On so they've got two mechs in their backfield, one on the left at Radio Tower and then the Summoner. They're playing like a third grade soccer team, but they're at least up on kills for now. But they need to finish Zelaglock off quickly if they want to turn around and get the job done. Buria finishes yeah. them off. Now they're moving back. Pelmashek they're working on those Wolfhounds. Pel yeah, Pelmashek getting up on O'Neal. stay alive while they get these Wolfhounds down. If he can win this fight one-on-one -on -one against O'Neal, it's going to be huge. I think just got legged. Trying to keep an eye in on the backfield. Uh, the Wolfhound is... Colonel O'Neill able to get, get a kill on Pelmashek. That's huge. Igor getting They've in on the backfield Igor here. here. He's able to get Nick, and Ego it's starting to swing Nick. back uh -oh. in the other direction. The Buria leg barrier is isn't able to do much. That's not good for RJF. This might have. They had a really good attempt there, but that's this might start falling apart really quick here. Uh, Wolfhound is booking it. Nomer getting taken out by Colonel O'Neill. He is doing work right now. Clutch. He's doing quite a bit of work. Get that kill on Pelmashek was huge. If Pelmashek won that exchange, that could have gone the other way. Or even just distracted them long enough. They've got an executioner who, you know, he's at sixty-one percent. He's not and wide Burry open. Liked. I mean, they they he can't lost a, cap. a laser. Eon going for the cap strat, and this is this is going to be over. Now, Terrace might be able to do some work if he can get some solid burns in, but he's outside of his optimal range here, so he's not going to be able to trade at this distance. Yeah, and O'Neal's just going to wear him down. He's got the range on him. They've got the speed to go cap. They've got a three cap. They're going to be pulling up a four cap soon. They have time, though. Terrace, if he can land some really good burns and isolate targets here, he might be able to pull something off. He's got to get into ER medium range, though. He can't be using one large pulse laser at extreme range. And he's kind of setting up himself up in a way where it's going to be very difficult for him to trade right now. And they're really keeping their distance here. He's trying to get in on Igor. That would be a pretty big kill if he can do it. But Igor is not going to stick around and allow him to do it. He's leading Terrace right where he wants him. And Terrace really has no response at that range. He's trying yeah, to get down in the pit. but O'Neal is just going to wail away on him. There's not much he can do. I mean, he's he's chasing, he's chasing, he's chasing, but it's not going to add up, unfortunately for him, to a victory. He's got to try and close and get gank kills or something. Maybe if he can get a burn on Dired, but I don't think Dired's even going to stick around. As soon as that cap flips blue, he's out. Terrace might be able to get up and over the top, potentially, to get the gank, knowing that it's not flashing anymore. And I think he sees that. He's going to try and cut him off here. Might have an opportunity on Dired. going to get a shot in on him just a second here. This might be an opportunity right here for him to get a kill. Dered playing that hill. Halfway to victory. And oh, Terrace isn't going to be able to so bend low. down, is he? Oh, and oh, he goes man. down. 
Last one remaining is Buria. Nice play by Durant there. Going for there. the Gamma Cap, but he is legged, and this is going to go for sure in favor of Eon Synergy. A good attempt there. He's trying to kill himself. He doesn't have enough lasers to do it yet. Override shut down. I don't think those machine guns are going to overheat him. That's, that's not how you cap. That's not how you cap. What are you doing? Oh, he's only got two lasers left now. There we go. So, a little seppuku by Burrier to, Burrier to finish it off. But uh, Eon Synergy takes it 8-5. Uh, to five, And they will be moving on. They have made it to Vancouver. Oh, man. There we go. So, two of the three teams from last year's finalists continuing their dominance eon synergy imperial moving on to vancouver to play the newcomer 228 black watch who had a pretty good run last year in the uh regionals in uh the north american region but there you have it there's your three teams congratulations to everyone what a finish rjf i mean they had that last one it just got away from them eon was able to scatter some big fights didn't go the way that I think they wanted. Pelmashek really needed to put down Colonel O'Neill. That would have been a yeah. huge victory. But uh, Colonel O'Neill, crack shot, just taking that Arctic Cheetah out. Big, big finish there for him. And smart play by Eon Synergy when you're up against a push deck that's being very aggressive. Spread out. Get away from each other. Make them run a long way to get to you. And that's what they had to do, and they were able to wear them down, even without the numbers advantage. Absolutely. And it, it really, if RGF killed any of those mechs a little bit quicker, if they if they focused a little bit better, if they took some mechs out of the picture uh, and then protected themselves in the process, if they got Zelaglock out of the way because he was getting a lot of back hits in, if, they, if any of that stuff was different, that could have swung. I mean, it was really, really a solid match, a solid showing by RJF. It just came up a little short in that drop too. You could tell they wanted it. Uh, but Eon Synergy just being consistent, coming in strong and finishing off RJF in a two to zero series and securing their place in Vancouver. There are a couple matches left to be played to decide the seating for that bracket. Uh, but that is not going to go on today. Um, we will have those casted, obviously, in the future. But that was the question that people wanted to see answered. Who are we going to see at MechCon? And you've got your answer now. Eon Synergy, Imperial, and 228 IBR Blackwatch. And it is going to be awesome. It is going to be a fantastic yeah. series. Cannot wait to see it.